guys can you stop commenting that i hate thailand just because i give both sides of moving living and relocating to thailand the good and the bad doesn't mean i hate it there are plenty of youtubers that only talk about the positives how everything is so amazing and happy days and you driving the bike barefoot and thinking that you live in a la la land but my channel is about giving a true picture that there will be times when you know shit hits the fan and i provide solutions how to cope with it like visa like immigration process you know like scams so this video is about five top scams in phuket thailand if you want to get a fair assessment of living in thailand uh, and and guys like I, I don't need to convince you but I've been traveling to Thailand for the past eight years. I think I've got a perspective of both as a tourist and expat. I think my channel could really help you to get insight into real life in Thailand. So subscribe to my channel and I can guarantee that you're not gonna regret it. Visa, Thailand visa, it's probably one of the biggest scams. Often when you visit agencies that provide different type of visas like educational visa or uh, business visa where you get the work permit and they tell you oh my price is higher because I will complete the entire process in less than two weeks and then you go to other agencies and you just think oh hang on a second why is it 10,000 baht you know more expensive or cheaper and then they just give you a lot of BS basically immigration decides on this whole visa issue process not the agencies they have zero control whatever immigration decides i remember last year or the year before when the whole ukraine and russia situation happened a lot of obviously russians moved to thailand and they all were applying for educational visas so they can stay there for a year and don't go back to russia and fight for putin you know so i remember thai government or thai immigration they put a cap on educational visas and it was a chaos like people stuck there thinking oh my god how like how do i remain in thailand where i can't get visa okay another one where you would drive a bike and park it in the designated area let's say you're going out right and as you know in thailand everybody's using bikes including myself like i think i've driven a car a couple of times the bike is just so convenient and by the way guys get travel medical insurance that covers you for bikes that's going to be your number one issue when you're in thailand like i wouldn't worry about food poisoning or anything else unless you're some sort of natter that just goes out and get absolutely smashed <laughs> then yeah then get the full cover <laughs> just in case you end up in hospital and stuff but safety wing if you're not aware of this insurance they cover you for bike and road accidents not many insurances do have a look at it yourself obviously i've done my research and i've discovered that they are uh, good value for money uh, it starts from 45 dollars per month and it covers you for so many you know like cancellations luggage blah 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 so pretty good actually have a look at it there the way they write things on their web website is just it's pretty cool and it's very clear if i can understand it you know i'm latvian you can understand it as well by the way my uh link to the safety wing insurance if you do decide to purchase this is in description so i'd really appreciate if if it is you know matches and meets all your expectation please use my link not gonna cost you more but i'll get some some thank you from them <laughs> um anyway going back to scams yeah so you would park your bike designated area will go out you know restaurant bars come back the bike is not there the bike's been moved so someone physically picked it up moved it to a non-designated area of parking and then there is a chain around the wheel 
and basically you get a fake police guys or parking attendants so they would wear these kind of like high-vis wet vests and they'll ask you for money and say your bike was not parked in the right place you know two thousand baht and that happens so often so of course you can go and leave the bike and say a fourth but you know you'd pay a lot more from the place that you rented the bike if you're going to do that so anyway be aware of that when you go out as a big group let's say you go to beach clubs okay let me give you an example in Phuket so Cafe Del Mar you know beach uh, catch beach club I mean there's plenty there but check your bill sometimes you'd be like hang on a second I haven't had any Prosecco <laughs> so there will be some additional items added to your bill and obviously because everyone is pissed nobody really cares about two three four extra thousand but but I'm usually the one in charge of it and I check scams related to accommodation is massive in Thailand because people when they move there they simply don't understand the rules and don't know what they're doing so i'm going to give you one example they don't have wear and tear you know like in uk you're renting a property for a year and you know certain scratches like certain elements are you know classed as wear and tear i remember when i was checking out from my apartment which i rented for a year they wanted to charge me for a stain on a bedding that i've used for a year I actually had it in like one pile just to get rid of it. Uh, honestly, like pans, there were a set of pans and I, I swear to you, I've cooked maybe five times. They were charging me for a new set and prices, not what you'll find in Thailand, but almost Europe prices. So by the way, guys, if you want to see where I used to live in Thailand, I think I was paying, I can't remember now, like $350 per month very pretty apartment very cute i'm gonna share a video at the end of this episode so yeah make sure you stay right till the end so you don't you know you don't miss out and again this video will show you kind of the level of accommodation that's available uh because i go into details and do like a proper tour of where i used to live but anyway going back to scams yeah i, I had to pay a lot and i am like OCD level like honestly like I used to clean before the cleaner and I used to clean after the cleaner this is like I like everything so clean fresh I don't cook like uh, yeah so anyway be aware of that questions related to accommodation you know like during my consultations that I do um, and comments on YouTube are just so popular and guys I don't want you to think that I'm rude I simply can't respond to all the comments I read them all like I read every single comment but sometimes the response will take like 10 minutes you know to go into details okay you need to check this you need to check this because when I got my contract um, you know I was translating it like literally every single point you know what does this mean what about this what about this what about this and I still <laughs> you know uh, you know was was charged the amount I didn't agree with but anyway so if you need my advice and you want me to look at your situation you know your personal situation then the best way to do it is to book a consultation you know how to book a consultation with me and again we don't have to do a video call if you feel shy or you know feel uncomfortable or you don't know how the technology works or wh whatever you know whatever the issue is then we can do an audio call hold Sorry, on guys for interruption so what i was saying was that if you need me personally to look at everything i don't know to help you decide uh, where to live in Phuket it's a big deal you know if you end up in the wrong area it's really gonna affect your way of living you know your cost of living as well so and unless i understand your requirements i can't tell you yeah this is good this everyone's got different taste so for me book a consultation the description uh, in the description you'll find a link so by pressing the link it will tell you how much it is, how to book it, time zone, etc, etc. Of course, if you get stuck, then just email me and then I can help you out. But it should be pretty self-explanatory. So 
book a call and then and then you know i can give you a lot more information that i share on youtube another scam which is very common when it comes to hidden charges and accommodation is your electricity cost and uh, water basically there is a government fee and i think last time i checked there was five or six but what a lot of uh, agents do they mark up their own profit so they would tell you oh it's eight baht per kilowatt and of course if you use a lot of electricity which you will do because you'd be sweating like a pig <laughs> You know, it just all adds up. So really watch out your terms and conditions. And if you guys need my help, again, book a call. Book a call. I can give you some guidelines. I can give you some pointers. Sorry, I can't actually see what is happening. It's so sunny. And um, yeah, and I can just tell you, you know, bullet points. Like, okay, look for this. Look for this. Negotiate this. Cut this. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, in description is the link to Calendly of how you can book it. And again, don't have to have a video call. Audio call will be absolutely sufficient. Guys, if you like the type of information I'm sharing with you today, don't forget to hit the like button. This will be an indication for me that I should record content like this. I often ask my subscribers, like, guys, what do you want me to record next? So subscribe to the channel so you can participate in selecting the topics. Last thing, guys, and I'll let you go. Um, again, it is related to accommodation. So you get an accommodation for a year. You are buzzing because you got a good price. You've managed to save some money because you're good at negotiating. By the way, I am the queen of negotiating. <laughs> I always save like 40% off from the advertising price. But anyway, this video is not about negotiation. And then come November, your landlord says you've got one month to uh, leave. What happens during November, December, January, February and March, it's peak season. So if you on average paying 15,000 baht per month, let's say for your small apartment, during peak season, this the same apartment would be 30. So what a lot of um, landlords do, they kick out the tenants, then make money and then advertise it again. So... What you guys got to make sure that there is a clause in your contract that, you know, if any of the parties needs to exit, then there's some sort of financial, what do you call it, compensation. Um, sorting out my wardrobe, by the way. <laughs> it's winter and I haven't uh, lived in cold countries for the last 20 years. So, yeah. Anyway, I hope this was useful and i hope you've learned something if you did hit the like button or comment below saying thank you natalia that was useful or if you think it's a lot of bs then also comment i don't mind you know i like constructive criticism and for sure subscribe to my channel if you want to receive this type of information and you like my way of delivery um you know then subscribe for now, I'm going to go now, have some food, sort out my wardrobe and go and do my steps. See you next week, guys.